Hello, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to another episode of our Brentford Career Mode. It's positivity around the camp. There's every reason to be optimistic. We are in the top four. We are unbeaten in 18 games. It's a little bit of a weird season in the sense that half of our games have been draws. Nine draws and nine victories for us and we somehow find ourselves in the top four. Take nothing away from some of our performances though. Sometimes we have played amazing football and not many teams have been able to keep up with us so far. At the start of last episode, we talked about giving a new player a contract every episode moving forward. The last one, we sorted out the contract for Ollie Watkins and ever since then he's been in fantastic form. We're going to try to do the same here for our left back Rico Henry. He was vital for us in getting promoted to the Premier League and he's been excellent in the Premier League for us so far and long may that continue. Five years contract is perfect. Try and keep him at the club for as long as we can. Disregard the release clause obviously. They're asking for the 33k a week wage, 320k signing on bonus and 510k when he makes 15 appearances. You know what, he's going to definitely make 15 appearances. I'm happy to give him that and keep him at the club for another five years if we can. It's, it's very good. Our next game is going to come up against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And after that game, we've got Burnley to play and then Crystal Palace, I believe, before going into the January transfer window, which is going to be a great opportunity for us to move a couple of players out of the team you know a couple of players that are not getting too many game time for us at the moment we need to send some of the young players on loan as well and if there's if an opportunity arises for us to improve the score we'll be happy to do that but we don't need to sign any player come the january transfer window but like i said if a great player that's out there that is going to improve the starting 11 we're going to look to do that deal Catch Here's our lineup for this one then David Raya in goal, Jaden, you've got M. Janssen, Pinnock, and Rico Henry as the back four. Rico Henry on the back of signing his new contract. Hilal or Halil Devisoglu, I should say, he starts in the false line position. Ben Rama drops to the bench. Where with Benley coming up in the next couple of days, squad rotation is important, obviously. That's a strong starting back five for Wolverhampton Wanderers. They've gone with Morgan Gibbs White and Ronan in midfield, a little bit surprising. They've got Moutinho on the bench. I don't know what they've done with um, Ruben Neves because he's not on the bench there. Probably been sold or something, but it's still a decent team from them. Not the strongest two man midfield. Hopefully, we can capitalize on that. When you play against Wolves, that's always. You know, that inability to utilize your wingers, it's sort of, they ask their wing backs to man mark your wingers. It's almost impossible to play with the width. That's a good pass to Podence, but Jaden Bogle has done enough to get back. Look at Ollie Watkins though, how, how deep he had to drop to win that one back. That's what you want from your attackers. Hard work in attackers like that. Amazing work. Encouraging play from this team now. Keeping the ball. Gibbs White there, interception from the silver. Still with Gibbs White and Tabata combining very well. Pudens back to Tabata. We can concede a goal. Oh, Rico Henry has done very well there against. I think that was Raul Jimenez in the far post. Winning a header against Raul Jimenez, it's, it's always a hard task. But Rico Henry stood stood to it there. Jensen, Matthias Jensen now has drived all the way forward. That's a pass that Visogl has made a good run back to Jensen. Jensen in the bottom left hand corner. That back hill from De Visoglu. That that's that's the difference having quality in your team. What what a pass that is from the striker. The back hill was just it was just amazing. The pass to move him out wide. The back hill is just taking out the Wolves two centre backs taken out two of them completely and nice finish there from Jensen. Matthias Jensen have been in good form hasn't he? He's been scoring goals. He's amongst the he's amongst the December shortlist I believe. He should be amongst the December shortlist for player of the month with the way he's playing at the moment. It's a corner that's good block from was that Doherty? 
I think it was Doherty. But anyway, Josh Da Silva with a cross. Oh, Puntus Janssen. He hasn't scored a goal this season. I think he got a couple last season. It's been Kaleta Char getting all the goals for us this season. We need a second goal here to be able to say this is game over. And even that 2 0 against Wolves in the first half. It's still not game over. Johnny, Johnny and Ronan combining very well. Out wide now to Podence. He slowed it down though. Every time he slows it down like that. And here we go. The referees blow his whistle, and we're off for the second half. There wasn't too much from Wolves in that first half, but earlier on in the second half, there that was an awful error. Ah, oh, David Soglu couldn't do it on on his own. What else did the What else did the goalkeeper down there? What the hell have the goalkeeper done there? I'm going to take it. It's the easiest goal that Visoglu is going to get in his entire career for us. That's the easiest goal he's ever going to get. First, first the mistake from the Wolves midfielder and then from the goalkeeper. Whatever the hell he was trying to do there, I have no idea. I have no idea, but we're 2-0 up. That's all that matters. I see a substitute coming on for the away team here. Doherty, that's a nice pass to Himnes. Himnes, who's been quiet in this game. It's been on like him. Normally, Wolves are whipping in crosses from the left flanks, from the right flanks. But Himnes, haven't, he hasn't had nothing to feed on in this game. Jensen is going to find the Visoglu. He's got a little bit of pace to get away from the defender. Oh, not again. Oh, no, the cheeky little cheap. Only managing to hit the crossbar. Not again, sooner or later, that's going to work. I'm not going to give up trying it. I am absolutely not going to give up trying to chip the goalkeepers. That's a good turn there by Polden. Comfortable. That's Raul Jimenez's his first shot in this game, but it's very comfortable for the goalkeeper. No surprise they're struggling with our players like Zhao. No surprise they're struggling with our players like Zhao Moutinho and the likes of Ruben Neves. I mean, it's Gibbs White, so still fairly young. And Ronan, I've no, I've no idea who that Ronan is. Ah, oh, don't give the ball away there, Jensen. Come on, that's a decent pass. Good save from the goalkeeper. Raul Jimenez with the header. He was never going to miss from that position. He was never going to miss from that position. Pinnock could have done better. He could have done better, but... Raul Jimenez is a big man, isn't it? You'd expect him to win that header every day of the week. Yeah, you'd expect him to win that header. He was always, he was always favourite to win it. That's his ninth goal of the Premier League season. Substitution there for us. It's about hanging on now, you know. Wolves have been playing so well the last five to ten minutes. For us now, it is about hanging on. Pulled into the cross and block. Wolves have won it straight back though. Bernard! Bernard forced the keeper into the good save. That's it. Oh my god, what a block from Jensen from the line. That's why he's our captain. Captain fantastic. What a block that was. Unbelievable. We would have dropped three points if not for that miraculous block from the centre back. Isn't he offside there? Yes, he is offside. What a block that is. I'm gonna make that substitution, bring on Mbuemo and take off um, Andres Scott Olsen what a block that was though that was amazing Jensen lovely pass inside to Norgard outside again to Jensen the space opened up for Mbwemo who's gonna get the ball always gonna always looking to come into his left foot the Visoglu with a nice turn to Ferreira Ferreira with the shot for Rui Patricio in goal into a good save. I, ca I still can't believe that error he made, you know, Rui Patricio. I still cannot believe he gifted us that second goal. Wolves could have got a point from this game. Jansen trying to go for glory there, but it's straight into the hands of Rui Patricio. It doesn't matter because we have won the game 2-1. The bees of Brentford, the bees of Brentford keep on buzzing at the moment. Buzz, buzz. We keep on playing so well. If we finish in the top four, it's it's just going to be amazing. If we somehow manage to pull this off and play Champions League football next season. Right now, the aim is still to finish mid-table. That's still the aim. We can't be carried away. Pinnock, man, I tell you what, you're beginning to annoy me with this 
constant complaining about game time i'm gonna go ahead and say to him you still have a place in the squad but then again i'd rather have him be ambitious like this you know telling me he needs to play games rather than happily sitting on the bench it shows that he it shows his ambition doesn't it our next game here against Burnley. if it's a home game i'm gonna be simming this one and then play the crystal palace one i think the away game against crystal palace it's gonna be a lot more difficult um, international management offer from Greece I'm not interested in international jobs at the moment yeah that's that looks like it's gonna be a home game against Burnley it is a home game we're gonna make a couple of substitution to the start in 11 I'm gonna give Pinock a start Kaleta Chard is gonna start this one as well um, and Buemo is gonna start out wide on the right hand side the Visoglu as good as he was is gonna drop back to the bench Oli Watkins is going to go back to the false nine position and Ben Rama is going to start. It's good to have a, a few 80 rated players in the team. The likes of Oli Watkins, Ben Rama and Kaleta Cha. They are all 80 rated at the moment. Burnley have had four points from their last possible nine. Their last game ended in a one all draw against Leicester City. Nonetheless, they are not a bad side at all. It's going to be a difficult one for us, but we have come up with a 2-0 victory. It's good to see the midfielders getting goals as well. Josh De Silva and Matthias Jensen with both goals for us. Jensen scored from the penalty spot in the second minute. That's a little bit surprising. He's taking the penalty. Ben Rama is our designated penalty taker, but it doesn't matter because it was a goal. 2-0 comfortable for us. No substitution though, which is not good. You know, at this stage of the season, you want to be rotating your squad as much as possible and substitution is part of that. But yeah, 2-0 victory for us. That's, that's, that's all we could ask for, a victory. We'll go ahead and sim this, simulate this training drills here, trying to increase a couple of players' overall rating. Pontus Jensen, I'm trying to get him to 78 rated, but he doesn't seem to be growing. Maybe he has something to do with his age. But he just refuses to grow. I've had him there now for about four or five weeks, but it's, it's just refusing. It's frustrating how he just doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to grow. And um, Rico Henry there saying he's not going to lie. He thought he's lost his place in the squad. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and assure him he's doing great. There's no need to worry about it. He's been one of our standout players this season. And that, that has shown in his performances in our last few games. Our next game coming up against Crystal Palace, which we're going to play before going straight into that January transfer window and an FA Cup game against Nottingham Forest. It's really tough for us at the moment. We're having to play three games in eight days and that's going to show in our starting lineup here. It's a heavily rotated side from us. It's David Raya in goal, obviously. We've got a makeshift back four, Serge, Serge Ucanos at right back, Jansen Green, the young centre-back Green making his first Premier League appearance here in the centre-back position. You've got Karabats and the left back as well, Sosa comes into the team, Devisoglu playing in the false nine position. For Crystal Palace here, it's Vincente Gaeta in goal, the god Joe Ward. Um, Gary Cahill, Townsend, Milivojevic, it's a strong team isn't it and they've got um, Murik, that there that Murik is well up front, so it's going to be a handful, he's, he's such a big guy isn't he, he's a handful against teams when I've watched him play, I hope he's nothing as good in the game, but we just have to wait and see. Ferreira in the middle of the park. I still believe, even with the heavy rotated squad, we can get all three points here against Crystal Palace. And Buemo to Devisoglu. Devisoglu trying to find Jensen in the same combination that got us a goal against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Trying to do that again, but on that occasion, it didn't work out. Some of the sides in this game are very defensive and Crystal Palace is one of them. The same with Wolves, the Visoglu, good strength there to hold off the defender, Serge Kanes. Oh! oh, that was to the head of Mbwemo. That was definitely going to the head of Mbwemo, I believe. Matthias Jensen, Sosa to Ferreira, the one-touch football is good. Ferreira is going to find Ben Rama out wide. Ben Rama is going to put a cross here into the far post. What a save! What a save from Vincente Gaeta. Look at that though. We have got that. 
joint best defensive record in the league at the moment with Liverpool. The last time we played Crystal Palace, it ended as a nil-nil draw and Vincente Gaite was amazing in that game and it started off this one exactly where he left off in the previous game. Kana's going to keep it in. Murik, Murik to Maximilian Meyer. What has happened to that kid? He had a lot of potential in his Schalke days. That's a terrible attempt. Terrible attempt on the midfielder. What has gone wrong with Maximilian Meyer playing for Crystal Palace? What's the potential he had? I can remember on his Schalke days, but it's it's all gone downhill for him. Lovely switch of play from Sosa. He makes this look so easy, you know. And Buemo Jensen has made the late run into the box. And it's a lovely finish. Yet again from Matthias Jensen. He can't stop scoring at the moment. He's, he's, his ability to arrive late in the box, it's, it's just... It's magnificent, you know. It does it with so much ease. Look at him making the run. He knows he's going to get the ball from that position. And when he does, the finish is wall was just fantastic. Crystal Palace now have to come out and play. If they don't, we're going to win the game. And if they do, we're going to punish them even more. It's a win-win situation for us. That's a good save. That is a good save from the goalkeeper. Just when I was saying it's a win-win situation for us if they do come out, I still believe that's going to be the case. Kuyate and May are combining there. Sheku Kuyate to Pedroza, Pedroza to May. They've signed a good player in Pedroza. Good potential in the game. If they can utilize his ability, it's going to be a great signing for them. But Serge Carlos has found himself with space. Normally, Devi Soglu's touch is a lot better than that. We are under pressure at the moment. Crystal Palace have put us under pressure. Come on. Crystal Palace have started the second half just like they ended the first half. Kaya. It's comfortable. Defending. He just can't. He can't shoot, can he? That guy. He had one in the first half that went awfully wrong, and the second one is so comfortable for the goalkeeper. I think they got him on the free from some MLS team, but I'm not sure. Oh, that's a pass from Ben Rama. That is a pass from Ben Rama. What am I trying to do there with Devi Soglu? What the hell was I trying to do there? Trying to go around the goalkeeper? Should have just picked a spot. Should have picked a spot. And just finish it in the bottom left hand corner or bottom right hand corner. Oh, that was. That, that could come back to haunt us at the end of this game. We hope it doesn't. Townsend have done very well. Back to Joe Ward and Townsend combining. Murik is going to win the header there in front of Matthias. Not Matthias, Pontus Janssen. But it, was not, it wasn't far away. James McCarthy is onto the pitch. Substitution for Ross as well. We need that second goal, you know. Crystal Palace are beginning to get here and get a hold of this game, get a foot hold of this game. Crystal Palace, that's a beautiful pass to Olsen. He's got a wand of a left foot, you know. Olsen is caught into that left foot. That's another great save from Vincente Gaita. He's a good goalkeeper, especially on this game. He makes some quality saves every time I come against Crystal Palace. But that second goal is still needed. Gaita is going to punch that one out again. Only to Ben Rama. Ben Rama to Jensen, who's going to hit it. It's been blocked. Still under control of the ball. The Visoglu couldn't turn there. That's a beautiful play on that right hand side. Jensen, Canis, and Skov Olsen combining well, but trying to go for the. Oh, we've won it straight back though. The Visoglu to Olsen. Olsen is going to hit the byline, pull back into the box. Matthias Jensen with his second goal of the game. What a game it's been. What a month it's been for him. This, this, the month of December. I've just, it's been, it's been so good. He's been scoring goals for fun. He just can't help it at the moment, making late runs into the box. And he's always at the right place at the right time. And whenever he gets into these positions, he just doesn't let you down. 
95% of the time he doesn't let you down great finish from him again his seventh goal of the Premier League season right now he's showing I've done it in the championship I can also do it in the Premier League 16 goals in the championship last season and seven in the Premier League not far not what am I even trying to say um, not bad for the center for the center midfielder the box-to-box -box midfielder not far not bad I was meant to say can he chase that? Can Devisoglu chase that? He was never going to win that. Not with three defenders gathered around the ball. But 2-0 victory for us. Another clean sheet as well. Which is important. Very important for the defence. That means this is our 10th clean sheet in the Premier League. That's just... That's incredible, isn't it? 10 clean sheets from 19 or 20 games. It's, it's wonderful. Jensen, obviously, with the man of the match. We, we were the better team than Crystal Palace and deserved all three points at home the january transfer window it's now officially opened it's the first of january 2021 and that means it is fa cup time i've got a little bit of a dilemma here by the way if i go to my squad hub and go into contracts we have got emiliano macondes where is he we have got a player here, Emiliano Macondes, with less than, with six months left on his contract. Being 25 years of age, that means teams can approach him to try and sign him on a free. Now, he was important for us to get him promoted last season. He wasn't a first team player, but it was a, he was an important squad rotation player for us. But this season, he hasn't played football. He's only played one game in the Carabao Cup. Is it worth? renewing that contract or should we just wait and see if a team comes and get him on a free but anyway let me know what to do is he worth giving Emiliano Emiliano Macondes a new contract or should we just wait and see if we can move him on on a free if we do give him a contract we can't move him on anyway up until next season because that's what happens when you give players new contracts and um, sorry to not say now that I've changed my mind can he get a game time I don't think he's gonna get a game time here I initially wanted to sell him, but I've changed my mind to loan him out. I'm gonna give Jansen a start. Jansen has finally gone up to that 78 rated, which is good for us. Our second third goalkeeper, Franson, is gonna start this one, Rico Henry. I am gonna give Canis a game, another game in the right back position, give give Jaden Bogle more rest. And yeah, Ben Ram are also not looking very great there. Fozu is going to come into the team. I'm going in with a strong lineup here, by the way. I do not want to be losing this game. Our first round. I think it's the second or third round of the FA Cup. But it is our first round going into it, obviously. We want to come away with the win going into the next round. Um, Nottingham Forest are doing great in the championship at the moment. But they lost, they lost their last game in the Cup to Manchester City. Hopefully we can get the victory here away from home. It's a 2-0 victory for us. Olsen and Pino coming off the bench to get a goal as well. The Bisoglu came, came, came off from the bench but couldn't get a goal there. Olsen got a goal from the penalty and Pinock off the bench to get the second goal. Important victory there for us and we go into the next round of the FA Cup. That's very important for us. This is a competition that I do want to win. If we can win this competition as well as finishing the top six in the Premier League, it would have been an amazing season for us. But we are going to end the episode here anyway. Like I said, I've got players in my short list for the January transfer window that I want to consider bringing in. For example, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick look here, a quick tour. If I go to my squad hub, we've got important players that I haven't really made a decision in. We've got in the center back position, we've got a young a young center back in Odil Kosunu, 71 rated. He's, he's very athletic, six foot three or six foot four, I believe. He's six foot three, we can pay that just over 3 million release clause and get him on a cheap but first we're gonna have to move a center back but the only way we're gonna do that if if an offer comes in that's too good to turn down we have got to runa riga as well one of the players that i was looking at in the summer transfer window we had to make a decision between him and kaleta char unfortunately we went for unfortunately for him we went for kaleta char instead we've got damsgaard a young center forward we've got center backs like ben godfrey 
we have got this player here and um, Ifan Chan Kavachi playing for the Shik here the Turkish side we could get him on a free transfer 25 years of age he's worth 16 million they rejected an offer from Porto in the summer but they're saying we have to offer him between 58 to 92k a week to be able to get him on a free but he's an 80 rated box-to-box -box midfielder he can play as that central attacking midfielder if we need him to we have got and um, Fikayo Tomori as well the Chelsea man at the moment he's just 10 23 we could also get him on a free if we wanted to we've also got Robin Koch the young centre he's not young anymore he's 24 from Freiburg the German side 77 rated again we could get him on a free but I haven't made these decisions yet an offer for our players needs to come onto the table that is too good to turn down there's no denying that Brentford is a selling club we know that we know we can't keep hold of our best players but in order to move it to move these players on it needs to be offered that it's too good to turn down but for now it looks okay in terms of squad depth I mean the board only expected us to finish mid-table we are in the top four which is a fantastic achievement for us so far but anyway smash a like on that video subscribe to the channel if you're new to it and i'll see you all in the next one bye for now